this one also a quick answer gordon uh fiala saying what is your ethnicity and do you find it to be significant to your uh what what is that word cognizance and behavior oh yeah cognition um so no i don't give a crap what is your I'm ethnicity actually, no <laughs> yeah <laughs> like yeah no i don't even the least the least my ethnicity says the least about me i mean i can't tell if i had to choose between my hair color or my ethnicity on uh, what it says about me and my behavior i don't know which one to pick do you like you know what i mean what what do you what would what about you i mean you kind of wait no you're different you're like you kind of like sometimes I actually like it when you sometimes talk about being, I don't know, Scottish and my people. I know you're saying it in a joking way, but it's kind of cute when you do that. <laughs> okay, I like it. I like it when it's like done in a jokey way. You know what I mean? Like when people like make it like they're not being serious about it. They're like, I'm gonna, like if somebody is like a Persian, and they're like, yes, we Persian people, this, this, and that, and we're like. We, we we used to be kings and we had an empire. I, I like want to puke. I want to puke, okay? But if someone does it jokingly and makes, you know, like in a cute way, I mean, like, we we used to, we be kings. Like, I don't know, like something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I just laughs at it. So I'm like, I can, I can appreciate that. So when Susie, for example, does that, you know, when she says like, oh, my people, the song of my people. <laughs> I hear pipes I, playing, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's adorable. That is adorable. Yeah. Okay. If it's done in a joking way, I like it. I like it. <laughs> I think Armin and I also have a very different relationship to these things. So you grew up in a country where your ethnicity is like highly culturally dominant, right? And then I grew up in a country where my ethnicity has been. Um, consumed into a, a different racial category of whiteness, right? So I don't have a real connection to my Scottish heritage. I know that I have it and I'm curious about it, but it's not something that was actively a part of my life or the way my family operated or the way I was raised, right? So to me, it's not something that is um, informative about who I am. It's just an interesting fact about how I came to exist in the world that I'm curious about. So like, I know the, like, I know what clan that I'm from. Like, I know what part of Scotland my clan came from. Um, but I'm not in, I have like, you know, kind of a light affinity for Scotland. I'm like, yes, independence, like the Brits mm. screwed up, you know, like all that stuff, but it's not like a real, it's not a real felt, um, identity. Whereas for Armin, he associates someone being really into their Persian identity with a bad taste in his mouth that's accompanied by Persian nationalism and racism. Like, so there are very yeah. different experiences. Supremi like ethnic supremacy and yeah. crap like that. And an inferiority complex that you're trying to make up with because of your history. Like, like oh, we're, we're crap now, but we used to be an empire. I promise you, we were an empire. Look at our history. Look at how big our map was. Like, please, yeah, look, yeah, yeah. Look. Don't look. Don't look at us now. Look at our history. Yeah. And like, look at, like, okay, like Neptune is saying, like, but Persians were great and their empires were great too. Yeah, but I don't feel any connection to that. I feel... Like my sonic connection with you guys right now in the live chat is much like who okay, like what does that got to do with like us today? Like you know what I mean? Like like oh you these are my my people. Like why? Like just because you happen to be born within the borders of the events that happened in that area, like <laughs> this see that's my so. clan had a tartan. This is our tartan. <laughs> Every clan has their own pattern, and this is mine. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay, yeah, that's kind of cute. Um, I guess the way you're doing it is kind of harmless, but my experience with it has been so harmful, like so such an yeah. excuse to look at Arabs as inferiors, look at Afghans as inferiors, 
look at Turks and lures and I don't know. It's just like such a such a toxic thing. You know what I mean? Um, and I I just feel like I don't feel any connection to that. Like I don't feel why. Like what is what does that got to do with me? Like I feel like a stronger connection with Susie than like some other some other guy that I don't know just because they happen to be Persian. You know what I mean? What does that got to do with me? Like it has nothing. It has no relevance to me. Yeah. For me, I mean, the only like, relevance I guess. I'm like, yeah. look at this is my family's crest. We had a motto, like you know. <laughs> yeah. See, like the, the, a lot of people ask me, like, why the I mean, why is making if you f feel no connection, like emotional connection to? I mean, I feel nostalgia because I was born there, I was raised there. Like, there's that nostalgia is something that I feel, but then, but people say like, if you don't believe in like. I do also believe, believe in civic nationalism, as in like I do believe that the concept of a nation and borders to be the right way of managing geographical places. Like I see yeah. the usefulness of the concept of a nation. So civic nationalism is something I believe in. But in other forms of nationalism, which I won't get to the definitions there, I don't see that, <clears throat> like I don't see the, I just see that as toxic and harmful especially when it comes mixed with ethnic nationalism i mean that's the most harmful ways of um but then people ask me why are you making persian shows if you don't feel any connection to that well because i speak persian <laughs> right so i could be uh, i i i feel that i could be useful given that i speak the goddamn language if i was like if i spoke arabic and persian i would be making persian shows and arabic shows like one of my greatest regrets in life is not taking arabic seriously in school um like we i took it seriously enough like we hated arabic right because we thought oh this is a foreign language that is being forced upon us right but I given mean, that it, I was was. <laughs> it was but like <laughs> given the fact that given the fact that we were studying it for six years i might as well learn how to speak it properly so i could like now how much more powerful i would my activism would have become if i knew how to speak arabic properly like it's so sad that i don't right um yeah but again one reason why we hated Arabic so much, it was about because it's not just because the government forced us to learn Arabic in school. It was also because we saw it as Arabs are like, maybe like Arabs, like that's the language. Really? That's the language we want to learn? Uh -oh. Like, not, you know, not French, not, I don't know, Spanish, not English, Arab, like what a like what a useless thing to learn i keep spitting today but but where did he get that where did he get that mindset from from that in sense of su racial supremacy right mm -hmm. like even though i was somebody that was proud of not having that sense of racial supremacy i was still felt felt that i don't know maybe french would have been better to learn than arabic but now i think about it no arabic is a lot more useful to learn than french what are you talking about like what, what what's the purpose of learning french 22 goddamn countries they learn like speak arabic and like imagine how much more useful to anti-islamic activism would have been if i knew arabic right so what a waste of six years of opportunity that i could have taken this seriously instead of learning arabic enough to pass tests uh by the way we aced our tests even though we don't know how to speak it like you just learn how to pass tests right but if given that it was right there in front of me if i have taken it seriously I now would have been fluent in Arabic. What a missed opportunity. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today and we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week so make sure to subscribe link in the description below